Okay, got it. Kia ora, everyone. Welcome to the Unable Seaman podcast, the podcast designed to take a light-hearted look at all things boating and fishing in New Zealand. Once again, I'm Jake Kerr, your host, and joining me, as always, is my first mate, best mate, Christian Jensen. How are you, mate? How are you? Not bad, man. Not bad. Hey, guest of the show yet again. Guest of the show. Yeah, well, I haven't got any other people who want to be guests, so I'm stuck with you. Oh, well, that's cool. That's cool. Keep introducing me as the, the main guest, you know. <laughs> I think maybe we could almost elevate you to um, to host status. Co-host. <laughs> host status, yeah. What's been happening? Oh, well, um, we've had some mint days. Uh, should have gone out fishing. Actually, my partner, Charles, said, yeah, we'll go out fishing on Saturday. It was a pearler in Wellington. Um glassy beautiful but i ended up pulling down my fence and started building a new one. Oh, exciting time so i'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, glad, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm so. really glad i've got you on the, on the show to talk about that you know yeah man so, i can tell you about Mara 10 yeah yeah <laughs> exactly what the listeners want to hear yeah you are right so, though about the weather has been outstanding it's um we're recording this it's the 5th of july and uh it's it's been very cold at night and it's freezing oh, here now but man the days we're freezing. having yeah, actually yeah, no, it, we might as well jump straight into it before we get to a little bit of admin. Winter fishing, mm-hmm. do you rate it? Yeah, man. Oh, and I rate, I rate, really rate winter diving too. Um, because the water's clearer. Yep. Yep. Um, fishing, fishing wise, okay, it's a little bit different. You know, in Wellington, the species definitely die off. Eh? So you get gurnard, you get a, a lot of barracuda, but um, the kingies are on out at Hunter's Bank and all that. So it's all, it's all still good. Yeah. It's just a little bit harder the fishing. So you'd you'd be sort of getting one or two as opposed to fishing a, a yeah. big bite time or, or that's whatever. exactly it. That's exactly it. But it's still worth getting out though. It's just yeah. different. And and do you find the jig slow down or bait and burly? Oh, or? Every, every, like okay, everything slows down. Yep. But I reckon that when you get a kingy, she's big and she's in good nick. Yeah. And so yeah. it's well worth it. You get out there and you go, yeah, we might not get something today, but when we do. Whoo, Nelly, hold on tight, man. You're going to get railed. You're going to get railed. I think it's also so much more rewarding as well because you normally have to get up early and it's cold and you've had to sort of fight the elements and you put the boat in at the, at the ramp and you've got your balls wet with the water, even though you didn't want to, even though you're just trying to get your ankles wet and you end up up to yeah. your testicles. And, and, and so I think every fish you catch, although they might not be as prolific as, as the summer months or spring months, they feel yep. so much, uh, you know, so much more special. Um, I, I would agree oh, with yeah. you. I, th- I think it slows down a bit. I find the jig fishing goes off um, where I fish, which yeah. is in the Bay of Islands. Although I know people listening would be would be saying the opposite. I follow that Ocean Angler page, and they seem to f- catch fish on jigs all year round. Um, yeah, I see, yeah. but, but we know that the water temperatures cools off a little bit, and the the aggression on the fish cools off a little bit, and uh, it's, it's, it is what it is. Yeah, and, but, and I, I watched I watched an episode of um, Lateral Line, yeah, uh, the last one, and they went soft baiting. Um, they went out of Tairua Harbour and soft oh, baited along okay. a, along a face, exactly that sort of soft baiting that I uh, was always talking. You know, people sort of love showing footage of, which is that casting into the wash and trying to yep. pull snapper out. Now, pretty much follows on from what we've said. They casted for basically a day just trying to judge by the footage and um and got a couple of snapper you know got a a feed but and made it made an episode but um yeah not as prolific as as usual just i just want to pick up on the comment you said about diving do you really dive this time of year yeah man i turn into a female yeah like my young my young you know young johnson um yeah turns turns into uh yeah I, i definitely associate with a different gender afterwards is it is it worth it? Uh, sometimes it's not, but sometimes you get in there and oh, you get a brain freeze when you hit that water, eh? Woo-hoo. But no, nah, I I still think it's worth it. I still think you get down there. You don't like crayfish, but um, there's still good crayfish to be to be had. Yeah. Um, it's still oh, it's just I just love getting in the water, man. And I'm not going to let, let a little bit of cold water stop that. Less people yeah, at the boat ramps, you yeah, know. Like yeah, there's, yeah. there's, there are some great benefits. Like you'll get there, and yep, your your feet freeze straight away as soon as you touch the water. But there's less people at the boat ramps, less pressure. Um, it can be a pearler of the day, and you might be one of the only people there. Yeah. No, I, I, I pretty do, choice. 
I definitely think there is a lot to be said for winter boating. I yeah, you're diving. I oh mate, I think yeah, I would. You're, I would you're a gentle soul at the best of times, uh, mate. I'm I'm a fair weather fair weather diver. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Although yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I will say, um, I my last dive was in April. I took uh, took some students across to get their dive. Don't tell me that was. Don't tell me that was cold. It it was okay. Uh, we had good gear, so we used all the all the rental gear, which is actually good gear. Um, and I see what you mean about the clarity of the water. That definitely made it worth it, and it just made made diving so much more fun. And in fact, it almost frustrates you when you think of some of the dives I've done in the past. I haven't done a lot of diving, not like you, but the, some of the ones I have been on where it's been murky. And, and when you get a, a good dive like that, you think, man, why do I bother with that other stuff? And that's where you, you, you go to winter diving in Wellington and you'll get some days where you just feel like you can see, your, you know, into, yeah. the, into the distance. It's fantastic. Yeah. You can see the crayfish from the top. It's fantastic. You know. Oh, how like, good. But, yeah. but whoa, okay, I know you don't like crayfish. I know that. But you can see other things and it's beautiful. Um, but, they, you know, they say that over in, um, not Hunter's Bank, sorry. Stevens Passage, Durval Island, winter fishing is the best for kingies. Now, yeah. you and I would probably disagree with that with our experiences, but um, yeah, for, for yeah, that, you know, for those that don't know, we have talked about it before. But Christian brought his new boat. Um, the main oh, yeah. voyage was taken out to Durval Island. We had issues where the floor started bending and all sorts, which we've we've spoken about before on the podcast. So we won't go into that too much uh, again, but. Or everyone said exactly that. Oh, winter fishing Durval Island, you'll come home with a binful. I think yeah. we got one legal kingy. Uh, yeah, I think that was it. You caught it. Yeah, yeah. But a stuck ton of um, bloody cow eye and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, everything yeah. else under the and sun. And we threw everything at it. It was the classic boys' mission. Take all the gear oh. and use. And to be fair, we did use all of it and had yeah, yeah, almost yeah. zero success. Yeah, but it was fun. Yeah. It's it was fun. so cool. Like, come on. We'll do it again. <laughs> oh, I'd do it again. And it was so cold. Christian had this this cooker on his boat, like this little gas oh, cooker, yeah. which was massive, massively dangerous. I mean, the thing had an open flame. But anyway, what we were doing yeah, to stay yeah. warm was tanks. squatting. <laughs> yeah, right by the tote tanks. Was squatting <laughs> over this flame, trying to stay warm between That's it. Between jigging. Yeah. yeah, I think I think it made the video. Anyway, bro, just a bit of <laughs> bit of admin. Normally you do this at the start of the show, but I thought we were on a bit of a roll there. A couple of things yeah. to report. Um mm-hmm. Surtees Boats has reached out to us. Surtees. Surtees. Oh, oh great. Mate. I mean, it was to correct me. I, That's wrong, okay. I wrongly said that their smallest boat, well, here's a bit of ambiguity. I said their smallest boat was a 470. Now, I stick by that. I'm sure they do a 470. Or did. Maybe it's a did. 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 And I think that Nace came out and said the smallest boat they do is now the five. Hey. Uh, something or other you could say what well, well, this is like you know oh the, the the smallest girlfriend i ever had was blah but you know like it's still like it still happened yeah it's, it's right it's right uh, so i apologize for getting that that stat wrong um but good on cities for, for calling me out clearly they they listen which is they, awesome they're probably going to be our best you know lead sponsor that, yeah yeah no. which is tricky hey, and, hey, and, actually I, hey cities i hear you made a, a 12 meter you want to correct me now well i'm going to be I'm going to be um, honest and say exactly what I said to them in that I have always been a snob, always been a snob with, with probably with alloy boats in general, but particularly with some of those ones like Surtees. And I always thought they were glorified garden sheds. Oh, ouch. I know. Oh. I know it's <laughs> ouch. And I think for some of the early ones, and I'm not just having a go at Surtees here, there's a, a lot of those, um, those sort of basic alloy boats that were fairly primitive. Would yeah. you, you wouldn't agree, you would agree, wouldn't you? Oh, m- m- massively. Yeah. But as we said at the last podcast, I, that's changed now. The game's lifted and there's so many alloy boats doing some amazing things in terms of finish and layout and stuff. I, I'll tell you the yeah. other thing. And you saw it at the, you saw it at the boat show? I saw it at the boat show and Surtees was absolutely one of the, one of the leaders yeah. there. Um, yeah. You know the in- innovation with, um, for example, only fitting half the bow rail on their hard top so that you can have a min coda. So if you watch Fishing and Adventure with Meg and um, yeah Meg and help me out with the other guy's Scott. name Scott with Scott, uh, they have they have a boat set up for that. So the customization that, that they're doing is really really cool. The yeah, other thing I reckon product. is that C deck product. That C deck product 
Jeez, it's good. Yeah, so many it does boats really soften, softens the boat, eh? When you go oh. from having a checkered floor or that um that tube matting. Yeah, those checkered floors are rubbish. They're like a prison cell. Y- yeah. Y- yeah. Yeah, yeah, but also yeah, okay. You know, we're gonna. Need, I was gonna have a little, you know, do your boat. That's cool. <laughs> no, 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 no we're, not, we're talking about thirty. We're not talking about my boats. Okay, um, but, anyway, yeah, it, but it does but, sound like you're ripping them. But you, you spin it around and say, "But now." Well, and I said that I was, I, I was absolutely honest in that. I, um, I said, "Look, I, I'm sorry." Yeah, you know, I, I mentioned that um, that you know, alloy boats were not my cup of tea, and that fiberglass was. But after seeing some of their product, particularly that boat show prize that they had, that gate prize, that was such a cool boat. Oh yeah, you'd have that in a heartbeat, and you could I drive away on the spot heartbeat. rather than yeah. waiting like yeah two years or whatever. Yeah. Now, um, so I, I definitely, definitely, uh, yeah. So did you, had a, had back, a mindset back, change. Did, did you secure a sponsorship for us? Uh, unsurprisingly, no. Uh, However, uh, they could still hang in the balance, but I, I probably have undone the sponsorship by um, comparing them to garden sheds a couple of minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> However, so, sir, if, you, if you are listening to this podcast as well, yeah, yeah, I've said yeah, some yeah, nice yeah. things now, and if you wanted to maybe continue my journey into liking alloy boats or being I think I might have alloy seen boats. It, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we would certainly, oh certainly appreciate it. Having said that, as you know, we're trying to jack up um, a MIG from Fish and Adventure to do a, a guest episode with us at some point. So I'm sure he will be um, fighting he's from came. the 30s corner. And he's, it sounds yeah, like he's well, came, which is awesome. But he will, he will obviously be, um, he will counter We'll probably any... have to do it from his boat. Do the podcast from his boat. That would be cool. I mean, our audio is already poor enough, so... What's you know, we don't lose anything, yeah. We're only going to get the echo of an, an, an alloy cabin, yeah. What, what I'll say though is this, and, and this is it's going to roll into something else, which so uh, this is the problem. Oh, this ready I for always, the segue. I, I, okay, part of a segue. We sort of spoke last time about boat shows and, and, and the, the relevance of them, but I'm also going to talk about sponsoring shows, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, as you know, we love Dickie mm-hmm. Boats. Dicky boats. Mm-hmm. I've really got a soft, a soft spot for white pointer boats as well. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. they're amazing. And what's the other finish. one? Um, Circa. Circa. Yeah, we, we really like the Circa. But their presence in terms of seeing them on TV shows or seeing them at boat shows and stuff is really oh. sort of quite under the radar. I'll give you an example. We we stepped on a dicky at a when I say we, my father-in-law and I stepped on a dicky at the on the water boat show last year. Mm-hmm. And I was made to feel really uncomfortable, if I'm honest, about just being there. Like the sales wasn't that interested, and sort of was a bit fussy well, about you know us why, being on the Because eh? you probably you probably rocked up and your your stubbies, your wife beater. You're probably <laughs> drinking a fine brew. Oh, totally. Look, I was in no way in the position to purchase one. However, my argument is this: Who knows who's going to purchase one? And second of secondly, you're at a boat show. I mean, as we said, well, you're, okay. you're at a boat yeah, yeah. You've, got to, you've got to be willing to have, you know, 99.9% of the people at that show are not going to buy your boat. Nah. So nah, it's not about not getting your brand out there. And this is where I want to pat Surtees on the back. They had an epic stand at the show. Yeah. They're sponsoring fishing shows. Yep, and, they are. And, and like, you know, our little two-bit podcast with Buddy, two like, listeners. They went out they of their way out. to give you they a call. Like they, they, and they're like, who are these clowns getting like, this, this, these facts from? I fact check the shtuk out of them. That's cool. So I, I, I think there's something to be said for that. Okay. Okay. I'll give you that. I'll give you yeah. that. So these guys, uh, they've got more time for us plebs. They have. They have. And I, I, I like that. But <laughs> like the that. segue I was getting to earlier before I went on that little tangent is. No, man, my tangent. That's not the only alloy boat I'm excited about. Oh, strap in for this, my friend. Okay. Oh, stra- okay, I'm holding holding myself down. Okay, how do I'm thinking how I introduce this to you so that I'm trying to think of a build dramatic, yeah, but you know, sort of drama for the listeners and for you. Okay, think of a wake boat. A wake boat. What do you, What do you think of? Uh, oh, the, the the classic skin or take. Okay. Yeah, what's big the fiberglass prop? thing. Um, they've got a big prop, you know, shaft drive thing with a rudder. 
you need a big deep boat ramp you drop them in and they've got these the big motors big boats big wake happy days yeah you're right and and, and that's yeah. essentially what they are but a new zealand company nomad jets has just created nomad jets. alloy okay. alloy alloy let me get that right alloy jet boat but it's wakeboard. a wake boat huh. alloy wakeboard boat okay what's it like well listeners we'll put it on our um on our Instagram. Yeah, so, so what, I, what I type in to see this? To, if, for the listeners, you can also jump on, go to Nomad Jets on um, on their website. Okay. A. Six litre V8, oh, 400 man. horsepower. Brilliant paint job, cool layout. There's a couple of videos there. Okay. But bro, here's, here's where I'm all in on it. Okay. Oh, I see it here. Yeah, with the cool blue yeah. wakeboard boats for those on a different journey. Because all those boats you mentioned before, the, the uh, ski nautiques and all that, I'm going to be honest, they do nothing for me. They're chintzy, they're massively expensive, they do one job, yep. there's all these like restrictions on where you can actually use them in terms of like depth, and as you say, shaft driven, and oh, they're just like, it's not for me. Yeah, yeah. this looks good, man, this looks real good. Bro. And this thing is more here. alloy, so you can run it. V8, 400 horsepower, the hammer hat river run so oh you can run it on the beach you can bang your wakeboard up against it okay, and it looks like you could use really that front nice. thing the front thing could be a casting platform thing you could you could fish out of it exactly you can operate in the shallows you could use it as just a jet boat okay yeah yeah, yeah. Now, mind you with a, a six liter v8 i don't I, okay anyway you still need a bit of grunt for wake for um or you know, for wakeboarding in there, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's not going to be the most fuel efficient. And was thing. there one at the boat show? There was one at the boat show. Now I forgot to mention it in, in last time's podcast. However, it doesn't matter because I'm glad I mentioned it now because we have had correspondence from Nomad Jets as well. What? I reached out what? to them. Uh, I met him at the boat show and, and was really blown away by that product. I think New Zealand made epic. Anything New Zealand made, I love supporting, and it's filling in a, a real. I think I'm filling in a real sweet spot in the wakeboard market. Because like I say, you've got those really expensive wake boats at the top end of the scale. $200,000 mm -hmm. for this thing yeah, with a stupid are. paint job. And they're a bit... Yeah. They're like the, the... You know how people drive around in those like really... They're like the boy races of, of the boat world. They can't do much, eh? They can't do much. They're stupid looking, make a whole lot of noise. They're, they're all about poses. They're poses boats. We, we would have had one when we were 18. Then the other end of the spectrum with the wakeboard boats is the knackered old bay liner with a tower that doesn't fit properly <laughs> and, you know, a whole lot of guys on it trying to weigh it down, right? We that's do that quite well. That's the sort of category that you and I probably come into. And, and to be fair, it does a pretty good job, okay? Yeah. So what is this? This oh, is bang in the middle. Do you talk about price? I don't know the price. I, know, I knew you were going to ask that and it makes us look massively um, inept that we don't know the pricing for this boat. Yeah. But I'm sure... I'm sure. Um, no, 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 uh, no. Yeah, if, if you were serious, I'm sure you could contact them. And get I'll, I'll call them now. I'll be like, hey, mate, I'm real keen on this jet. Cash yeah. buyer. It's, it's, it's an extremely cool product. And I actually think, even if it's even if it's the same as a Nautique or those other brands, those the G23 or whatever it is, I still think yeah. this has got more breadth of ability. Yeah, I'd give you that, bro. And like, it says here, Scott Water Jet 852, whatever. Okay, I don't know much about jets, to be honest. Blah, blah, blah. Just everything's tough about it. Heavy duty, fully adjustable, stainless steel, and spherical bearings, split duct reverse bucket. You know, this is this is epic. Skid That's plate, cool. protect the other side of your jet when you're bashing over rocks. Because imagine wakeboarding up a river. Well, the thing is, is even if, I don't know if you wakeboard up a river, you potentially could, but even if you weren't wakeboarding, you could go river blasting in this thing. That's what I mean. It's, there's so much more you can do with this thing. I, I really like it. I think it's great looking. Um, the technology, as you've just mentioned, looks, I mean, again, I don't know much about jets either, but all those things sound really good. Yeah, yeah. Hey, and, you know, you could go fishing from this. I like could how go it's got the, um, like a hard top front where you can put a cover on the front. Yeah, bro, how good. That's uh, cool. This is, yeah. this is clever. This guy's, this guy's thought about it. Well, so because so it is a, it is a new newish product and 
as I reached out to him and he remembered me and I told him about our podcast, so hopefully he's tuned in. And if, and if he has, um, yeah. yeah, mate, how are you? I, I should know your name, but I'm, I'm going to find your name because I, it's really weird really <laughs> that I have forgotten. <laughs> okay, we are all Clayton, again. Clayton. There we go. It's Clayton. Clayton. I just remembered that. So get out, Clayton, okay. if, if you're listening. Now, here's the cool thing. He yeah. wants to do something cool to launch this boat, to bring it onto the New Zealand market. And he's coming to the biggest he's, boating and fishing podcast there is in New Zealand currently. You've, you betcha. You betcha. So I'm he's quite approached to, us. Or have you approached him? Doing, well, I've approached him and he was polite said, enough oh, to well, give I me the time of day. <laughs> he, did, he, he didn't <laughs> tell me to piss off. So there we go. Okay. okay. So, this is a good start. So I think we definitely need to interview this man. Okay. And anyway, I want him to tell us about this product. So I think it's something our listeners would like. And yep. He's had a really cool idea for a launch. I don't want to say too much because it's not my secret. Oh, it's tell, his secret. So, but, oh, this is yet to be launched, this bad boy. Well, no, it's been launched at the boat show, but he wants to do something cool for like the summer to just get a bit oh, of yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Get a publicity, I suppose. Yeah, so, okay. mm-hmm. all I'm going to say to you, mm-hmm. have you still got your wakeboard? Yeah, of course. And how long do you reckon you could last on a wakeboard? Oh, about 30 seconds. Okay. We're going to need to build that up. That's all I'll say. I'm not going to say too much more uh, oh. on air here about about. The, well, you challenge. don't want to, don't want to like. What is it? Set the expectations high and deliver low. <laughs> I don't want to do that. But also, as I said, it's not my it's not my thing to to uh, to release. I suppose. So okay. I'll, I'll wait until okay. I have a full clearance. Have you that, have you even confirmed this with Clayton? I have. I have, and it's going to be later when the water's a bit warmer because as we just spoke about, the water oh, is you bloody cold. I'll do, it. I'll do it now. Okay, so there's oh, you be... have you have done it in like winter. Do you remember when we went wakeboarding and you went wakeboarding? Can I say that? Yeah, oh, I can. Yeah, Jake lost a bet, right? And he had to have his boat finished before Christmas time. Anyway, it was nowhere near it. I said, Jake, if you can't finish your boat Christmas time, you got to wakeboard behind my boat naked. And uh, to his credit, about two years later, he came down to Picton, and we went past Loch Mara Resort. And Jake had to try and do a wake to wake naked. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. It's, uh, it was cold. I'm still a little bit dubious about your intentions there because I think you were purposely sabotaging my progress on the boat and actually slowing me down just for a chance to see my probably uh, my goods. Yeah, you know? I, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and I've been warned never to do it again because you know I, yeah, I you came would. off and the, the big fella had got out in the inter island. I had to um, had to add another hour to its journey to go around it. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's get our heads out of the gutter. But that's the Nomad Jet anyway. That's that's something cool. really cool. So fl- sort of flowing on from from um, 30s and my sort of beginning of this transition towards thinking alloy things are cool. I'm surprised just... I'm surprised that he even wants to mix and mingle with us plebs. Yeah, well, probably more so me than you, but um, but hey, we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see. <laughs> yeah. The other really cool thing I want to talk about we mm-hmm. we touched on the 600 horsepower um, V12 engine uh, in the last podcast oh, briefly, eh? Briefly, yeah, yeah, and we thought that was pretty cool, like way, yes. way, 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 way overdone, but pretty cool. Side yep. note: spoke to a guy at Rayglass Boats. I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Do you know the protectors, the big ribs, the, and yeah, they go like. Right up to like, oh, I think it's 12 meters. It's yeah, super. yeah. So they use them for the America's Cup and all these things. Yeah, They yeah. have just, so they've just had a, a quick redesign on their transom so that they can take those V12 outboards. Ooh. So how cool. So so stay tuned for that. Ooh. You're going to see those on the back of those protectors. Pretty cool. Keep in mind love that. that. It's going to be awesome. Unnecessary power. What up? You say that, but those boats do get used for towing and for camera boats, and they are quite often work boats. And... And, oh, and now and now they need to have how much horsepower? Well, <laughs> two six hundred, twelve hundred horsepower. But you got to oh, yeah, remember okay. they also were sold in the American market too. Now they ship a lot of those protectors to America, and uh, Americans don't do anything under about six hundred horsepower these days. Yeah, I know. They, it's funny, eh? You see, like a six meter boat go out, which would be considered sizable by our standards, and it's got a two hundred on the back, which would be borderline like excessive. Yeah, and that heads over through the Hanover outlet or whatever it's called, or all over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just think, oh, that's a bit, but on the small side, isn't it? After yeah. you've seen these things with five or six outboards on the back, head out. 
that, that, that if you if uh, if anyone doesn't know what we're talking about, have a look at that haul over haul over boats. It is called it is called haul over, haul over it? inlet haul over inlet. Yeah. Some yeah, fantastic yeah. footage of boats. These big American things big. with about ten outboards on getting the snot knocked out of them. Oh, it's a yeah. there's it's a big bar crossing basically where you've got this harbour or I don't know boat boat harbour that. They, they head out through all sorts of weather and there's a dude standing there with a camera and he's got a pretty good setup and he just takes videos of these guys trying to cross these huge bar waves. It's fantastic. He, um, and he some, loves, sometimes they win and sometimes they, they, and they sometimes get they get smoked. it wrong. And either way, <laughs> normally once a video, he zooms in on some woman in a slightly pervy, disturbing way, but... No, that's he does say he's a bit <laughs> weird. <laughs> something to look and doesn't to. say anything. He's saying stuff the rest of the video, and yeah. then all of a sudden he goes quiet. You a, go, You're a dirty fucker. Right? <laughs> there's a silent. Yeah, there's silent. Uh, but, Jake, can you relate? Can you? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, I don't oh, film hey. it. I don't film it and post it on the internet. That's for sure. But oh, yeah, following on, getting back again, getting back. To oh it, man, we uh, we we've, we've, we've got to stick good. to like our, you know, we've got an agenda. We do, but so we were talking about the uh the six hundred horsepower V twelve. Um, Mercury out. Go back step. Like. I just How thought about this. Oh, we have an agenda, but I don't know what it is. Only you do. I'm just going along with this. Oh well, that's that's fine because I'll, I'll okay, guide cool. us back Carry to on. it. Because what I want to talk about mm-hmm. is a diesel outboard. A oh, diesel yeah. outboard called a CXO or a COX. They they. My reason I don't know is they what? said CXO and COX. They said both ways in this in this article. So I don't know if it's a Cox or or not. I thought it was a COX. Cox, D. Cox. Okay. Here's the headline numbers. 300 horsepower. OXC? No. Google oh, there it. is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're Cox Marine, and then it's called a CXO300 is the brand of the... Okay. Righto. There we go. So it's developed by the um, by the British Navy, who insisted oh. that they wanted, uh, they wanted diesel outboards for their fast patrol ve- vessels for doing whatever they need to do with those. I don't know. Invading Dunkirk okay. or something. But what, oh, well. they've, what what they've um, what what they've achieved is obviously made a, a one for the the recreational market. So it's it's three hundred horsepower. That's huge. Okay, I, I saw it running at the boat show. I've read the review here. You saw it running? Yeah, I saw it running. It's a bit noisy, it like? and it's not too fumey. To be fair, diesels do have a a yeah. Well, most things aren't fumey when they're just idling away. Yeah, like, exactly. Not, okay. And then when you're anyway. moving, it doesn't really matter because it's all going behind you. Um, there's a cup. Yeah. So what do we got? At 19. So this was put on the back of a. Um, it's called a striper for those of you that know. It's basically a center console, bayliner, trophy type looking boat. Yeah. Okay. They uh, look big and heavy. Eh? At idle, only marginally louder than the four-stroke petrol plant. Um, okay. Here we go. 2300 to 2800, they reckon, is the sweet spot for the RPM, which is quite low for an outboard. Okay. Yeah, but it's about and right for diesel, isn't it? That is about, about right for diesel. So 19 to 25 knots, fuel consumption of 18 to 25 litres an hour. So it's hmm. basically a litre and a like mile. less than a third yeah. of an equivalent 300 horsepower, because they would be running at about 70. Yeah. So pretty, pretty good on the economy. Um, on the uh, on the economy side of things, there mm-hmm. is one massive problem which we're over overlooking here. Yeah, you mean you mean the elephant in the room? <laughs> yeah, well, there's there's two elephants in the room. An elephant being literally it's sixty kilos heavier than the equivalent petrol outboard, so that's the weight of 60. an extra person. Six oh, zero. sixty kilos heavier heavier than the equivalent three hundred horsepower. Yeah, so the, the, this is a three hundred this diesel engine. So it, you know, name yeah, okay. let's just say the the Yamaha three hundred horsepower, whatever. Okay, so it's 60 kilos heavy. So that is a person. That is a whole person. Wow. But you're right. The absolute black mark for this engine is, of course, the... How much does it cost? The price. $99,000. Yeah. Oh, 100 grand for one. 100 grand for one. Wow. Almost double what you'd pay for the equivalent. Really? Uh, is that far out, man? That's just... Yeah. I'm just going right now to go into your old uh, boats and marine and yeah. uh, what do we call it? Uh, parts and accessories, I think it is, for the old outboard section. That's yeah. insane. Well, it it is insane. 
it's a hell of a lot of diesel to get through to make that worthwhile. You're right, like a 250 Mercury four-stroke V8 Verado. Yeah. Brand new, 48 grand. Mm. So a there 300 is... horsepower dual prop Suzuki, only 40 grand. See, that's a cool. That's a cool engine too with the Duro prop. That is a very. That's cool very engine. cool. I, I have, yeah, a, very, have a soft spot for those. So you've got to use 50 grand worth of fuel with a diesel to make it worthwhile. Right. Now I'm not a wow. mathematician, but that is a shed load of hours on the water. Yeah, man. That's considering that's a boat. That's a that's a whole boat second hand. A really nice second hand boat. Yeah. With a so, 300 horsepower on it. Yeah. And I like Ooh. so I like it, but I'm not so sure. Which again flows us very nicely to man. We've got oh, all these well, segues now. You are. You're getting real good. Um, have you been? Hey, just sorry before you segue. Have you been getting my um, shitty boats that I've been sending? I you? have. I have. I. We're, we'll talk about the dog of the month very shortly. But yes. Oh, uh, cool, cool, cool. Um, I, anyway, sorry. Your segue. Yeah. Uh, that's why I'm a little bit distracted because I'm looking at these things. They are. They are absolutely wonderful. <laughs> <Idiots>. <laughs> um. Yes, so we're talking about the diesel outboard. Now, the government um, won't get too political on this podcast, but the government has just announced that there's going to be um, taxes or levies or whatever, however you want to call it on yep. all new vehicles sold um, very shortly, I think, the end of this month. Was it all new? I thought it was only like anything except electric or whatever. Well, that's what I'm saying. So it's, yeah, essentially, it's a gas guzzle tax yep. if you wanted to break it down. So electric cars are going to have a rebate. Um, cars with, uh, with, with you know high high fuel consumption or what have you are going to, you know have a higher pay a penalty. Um, so your your ranges, yeah. your utes, all this. Yeah. Here's my question to you: How long before that spills into the outboard industry or or, or the marine oh, industry full stop? To be honest, to be honest, mate, I don't think it ever, ever will. Or if it does, it's gonna. No, nah, I I don't think it ever will. There's a couple of lakes in America where they're electric only. Yeah. But that's for uh, environmental reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, but and, and, I just can't, I can't see the benefit, you know, the, the old benefit of actually how many people use their boat per year versus this, you know, the, the saving to the environment. I just don't, I just don't think the savings there and it'll be a political bomb. Yeah. I'm inclined to agree. I even think. I mean, I even think the vehicle side of it is a little bit. Yeah, too, yeah. We don't, but, we're far, gonna, but, but we're not going to yeah. go into that. But I, I agree. I think the marine industry is a whole other level again, and the fact that with at least with electric cars, some of the technology is there, and there are going to be arguments about infrastructure. Uh, and, there and there are like some that. fifty horsepower electric outboards. Yeah, but fifty horsepower, and, and we have there is that electric boat which we spoke about way back in our first episode. And yep. the picture of it is on what our. About that app. Dick, that, is that that Dicky one? No, that was the. It's um, a little center console. It's on our. No, app, no, 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 no. There's adventure. another one. Hurley. Hurley made an electric. There's, yes, 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 yes. Hurley did an all electric boat. That is very and cool. And that thing has like a 1250 nautical mile range for a 600 liter tank. Yeah. That Hurley thing is epic. Um, so that's cool. Yeah. Should I pick? I should probably find it pretty quick so we can and, share it and talk yeah, about it. Well, we can we can put that on the. I'm just to make that down to put that on our at unable seaman uh, yeah, Instagram yeah, yeah. page. So please make sure you follow that. There is another boat too. It's the X Shore. X Shore. Remember we spoke about that in episode yeah, one. Yeah, man. And that yeah, is also did, yeah. on our on our at unable seaman uh, Instagram channel. That's quite a cool electric boat too. So I do think some of the technology is there. Yeah. Um. Again, the infra- this the same problems that plague the electric car industry is going to plague the boating industry, which is infrastructure to charge these things um you know where are the fail safes if you're at sea and this thing loses charge or you know water and electricity traditionally don't work that well together um it'd be really good yeah. to talk to that guy from hurley boats at some point and, and, and see how he got around it he got it so maybe he, he has made a couple of stunning boats eh? i'm oh, just that. having a, i'm trying to find this one that was it was in one of the boating magazines that you actually gave me yeah, and, and if anyone wants to jump on YouTube, I think there's a, there's a video on that as well. Do check it out. It's, it's I think it's called, dear. here we go, here we go. It's called the Hurley, H-E-R-L-E-Y, electric catamaran. It's a Powercat 3400. 
And it's got it's oh it's a Roger Hill design. He's well known for his catamarans. He is well known for his catamarans. And it's um electric engines with a diesel generator. Diesel yes. electric. Diesel electric. Now that makes sense because you still need a fuel source, right? So if because if you're going yeah. to well, it has a 35 nautical mile range, electric yeah. only. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, th anyway. I think I think there's there's some something to be said there, but it just sort of flowed on from the diesel outboard, this idea of economy and whether Blah, 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 going. Yeah. We're looking at the car industry and where that's going. So by 2030, I know, I know in England, 2030 you won't be able to buy a combustion engine anymore, new. In England. In England. And I Jesus. think. Jesus. Yeah. Really? Yeah, that is 100 percent true. Yes. And that is <sighs> that is wow. fairly fairly aspirational for a. a that country. is, isn't it? That's you that's know? impressive, man. And I think our government has similar aspirations now whether it's whether you're labor national left right it doesn't matter Again, we don't want to get too political i think that's where the world's going yeah the world man. is going yeah, to we're... to cleaner 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 energy be it electric be it whatever um we sort of we're accepting that uh yeah she's um going downhill if we don't do anything about it eh? that's right so, so i am intrigued to see where the marine industry goes with that i know sea have started doing some electric jet skis who yeah, well, you say, ooh, but that makes sense. That totally makes sense because they're a toy, right? You go to the oh, lake, plug it in, have a zap. For, Yeah, I think that's yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, I, yeah. I can't tell you the model. I've, I've seen it, but again, jump on YouTube uh, to our listeners, have a look. They're, they're quite cool. And that's that's a company, a big company. That In Rotax Engines, their special engine was their their thing. It was their point of difference. So for them to, now, to essentially ditch that and go to an electric um engine that's pretty brave eh? it's cool it's cool it's really cool yeah, i always wondered why they call it a rotex engine anyway but we don't die, die yeah i don't know are you asking the wrong person there yeah i know <laughs> sometimes I don't even hey bro where's the fuel cap for my truck <laughs> exactly <laughs> um i have another couple of things here just moving on from boats a little bit to fishing gear oh what have you got for me well, I, don't have, I actually want to pick your brains because I think this is an area you have much more expertise than me. You know, and I, Stop I it. To, hey, uh, listeners, uh, can you just note this as a pivotal <laughs> moment in our podcast careers? <laughs> I have more expertise than Jake. On cool. this very specific Oh, topic. sorry. I, I, very, did, specific I missed it. Topic. Okay. very specific. Okay, carry on. Kingfish, kingfish, uh, chasing kingfish, okay? On jigs. Yes, on jigs. Your, your best overhead set and your best spin set what would if money wasn't an option oh money's well, we'll do not an two. Option. let's do let's do money's not an option and then let's do one for someone who has watched a lot of kingfish action recently and and wants to get into it and the reason i say that is because the more and more i read about the snapper fishery that every other day seems to be an article about how it's getting absolutely nailed it doesn't matter where you are in the country it's 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 getting toasted and there's yeah, such man. a low survival rate for releasing them. This whole idea of catch and release is, is being challenged um, a lot. So kingfish, much more robust. Yep. You could bring it yep. up from 300 meters and the thing will swim away fine. Yep. So I, I've made a bit of a conscious effort in my head that I would like to target more kingies. Yeah, yeah, I can. Uh, yeah, they're, they're robust fish. They get released easily. Well, not easily, but they they can be released quite well. They're you know, pretty uh, successful with that. They, they fight harder. They're good fun. You find them oh. anywhere. So, so e for somebody... eating wise, that you know, oh, like I, I dig it on the barbecue. They the meat holds together really oh, well. Smoked. I can recommend smoked. Yeah, so those yeah. ones I like, like. Okay, they're a bit bland if you pan fry them. But yeah, okay. Yep, yep, yep. yep, yep I agree. So tell Great. me your tell me your best overhead set and your best spin okay, set. Okay, best an overhead dream overhead set. Okay, here we go. Do you have you heard of a brand called Maxel? No. Okay, so Maxell, um, they are like an elite jigging reel. You've got sort of Maxell and then you've got Jigmaster and Jigstar, all those three together. Any of those high-end reels would be epic. But the Maxell Transformer uh, F50, uh, I'll have to send it to you. It is a very sexy piece of kit. And actually, one of our friends, you know how Shane and Troy down in Christchurch? Yeah. Troy has an addiction and a slight issue of buying fishing gear. Good man. He Good man. has a yeah, yeah. He's he's got he's. I like him, <laughs> and yeah, yeah. And Shane Shane is sort of supports this, but anyway, uh, he has 
uh, a Maxil transformer. I don't know which size exactly. I, okay, I, I so, so I've written that but, down, Matt. Um, so I'm going to put that on the on Max, our at, um, our Instagram at Unable Seaman. It is just like if money wasn't issue, it is sexy. What does it you, cost? What would you be looking for at there? What, nine hundred dollars for the real. What, what nine hundred dollars for the real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. That's quite a bit, eh? That's okay, it's a little bit excessive. What about Rove Rod? Would, would you go with an acid wrap? Are you a fan of acid wraps? Or? Uh, it doesn't worry me, but yeah. um, I'd probably go for a Three Kings special. Okay, it's an older one, but yeah, I'd probably go for Three Kings. Who makes that? Jigstar. Jigstar, okay. Cool. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I might be wrong. I always get this um, I'm muddled up. So it's Jigstar or Jigmaster. So let's have a Three Kings Jig Rod. Rod. They look cool. They were like one of the original, you know, get out there and, and give it. A, yeah, it's a jig master. Sorry. Nice. Three King special. Okay. Um, that uh, sexy rod, man. And they, do you know the, uh, is it, is it Richard? Um, oh, Poller, Poller or something. He's a, he was a famous, he's a Kiwi famous um, fishing charter guy. Yeah, no, I know he took Rick Pollard or something. Yeah, Rick, Rick Pollard. Yeah, that's Rick the one. Pollard, yeah. he, he was a, he was a part of the the team that took this group out fishing that made the Jigging Master Three King special. Yeah, cool. So yeah, Good and story uh, there too. Uh, yeah, man. So pretty cool. Um, I had one. You might remember I had one on my uh, overhead set. Sorry, spin set. Yeah. Um, but I had it in a ridiculous weight. I had it in the um the four hundred action, which is the three fifty to five fifty gram. So, so it you was a uh, carry tree broomstick. You would have been better off using the telephone pole. Yeah. Yes. So if I could get it again, I'd probably get it into the in the 120 to 300 gram. Okay. Oh, that that's good advice. So so that's your that's your money's not a that's money's no issue. Boom. Six hundred and fifty dollars for the rod. Eight hundred dollars for the reel. Oh, sexy. Okay. So stick, sticking with the overhead before we get to spin. What about oh, yeah. for someone who is just getting into it, maybe listening to this podcast because they've got nothing better to do, um, and and is thinking, oh, I could get into a few kingies. What's a, what's a yeah. good sort of set you would recommend uh, for them? Oh, okay, real easy. There's there's two brands out there that I'd go for. Uh, the first one would be everyone knows Shimano, the Shimano Torium, uh, 16 PG, yeah, and then it comes Star to the, Drag, eh? Yeah, Star Drag, really really good, really strong, beautiful T handle. And it's, uh, it's got a grappler rod. I think it's a one piece. Most jig rods are one piece. Yeah. Um, but it's P6. So it's a bit of a heavy rod. But you, you pick up that, one of those. It, it might even have a grappler. If it doesn't have a grappler, it'll be even cheaper. It'll be like $400 and you've got a rod and reel. That's cool. That's, a good that's like, you know, that's, and that's a good quality set, you know. And the other one is the Okuma Metalloid. Nice. That is a... That's probably an even better set. So that's a lever lever drag. Yeah. Um, I really rate those Akuma Metalloid rods. I've, I've got one as well after using one. I thought this is choice. I had to buy one. Yeah. And um, awesome grip. I told you, I said, bro, if you're looking for a jig rod, get one. That bang for buck. And 220 I, bucks. I listened to you because my dad bought one at the boat show. Yeah, has he hooked up on it? No, we haven't. We haven't used it yet. I must admit, he, he got the reel too. There's, so there's a metalloid reel, yeah, and and a rod. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they only sell the metalloid um, overhead reel in New Zealand. Okay, but they cool. sell both the overhead and and spin style rod. Yeah, yeah, man. That's um, that's bang for buck. Those bad boys, though. Okay. I think the let's have a quick look. I'm just trying to see if the metalloid is in here. I'm so, on marine deals. What, what, and while you're doing that, I'm going to throw my two cents in here. And I, I agree with both those choices. I'm not a fan yeah. of the Torium for star drag. I would go for a lever drag combo. So I've got a Shimano Torso, which you can't buy anymore. But you can't. Yeah. Are, and, what, and why is it running well now? Um, <laughs> because, <laughs> because Christian very kindly organized a service for me. Now, yeah, it's the second time <laughs> it's been serviced. I mean, no, I, it's not. When the, the first time doesn't count as a service. You bu- you broke it. I did. Until I your mate okay. fixed it. <laughs> he did have to fix it. For those that don't know, I, um, I made an absolute meal of it. I washed the reel in salt away. Now, someone said, oh, clean your reels with salt away. So I thought, sweet. Put oh, a bucket of salt yeah. away and Dropped threw the reel there. in. And then wondered why the next time I went to use it, it wouldn't turn. Um, it, it had actually seized. So 
my very good friend Dylan very kindly pulled it apart and yeah man told me never ever to do that again and pulled you, you're many lucky, names man, which I can't friends <laughs> can't repeat on this podcast <laughs> and then I've thrashed that reel ever since for yeah how many years I Christian will tell you I do not look after gear I try to look after gear but I just don't end up looking after no gear. you don't even try to look after gear man <laughs> let's be let's be honest and <laughs> you use it use it so any any people out there that want to sponsor us um get in touch with me not him i'll look after the bloody gear so no i disagree I'll... you should get in touch with me because then i can thrash it and give a realistic sort of analysis of 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 it actually lasting oh if, if, okay. if, if, if a reel can last a season with me or any piece of gear for that matter chances are it's yeah. really robust it's probably all right yeah okay, okay. It'll, it'll last I'll, I'll most people five years that. Yeah, yeah, okay, 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 cool, 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 cool. I'll give you that, I'll give you that. Okay, get on. Now you want to know spin style, eh? Just, just very quickly, some some spin sets. Um, I know what I would yeah, have. Sorry, I, I, would, I, would, I would go with the, um, well, there's two. It'd be a tie, and it, it's pretty obvious, really. The Shimano Stella, um, probably 10,000 uh, 10, would be a bit smaller. What's the next one up after that, 25,000? Nah, you can, I think they have a 15, don't 15, they? 15,000, yeah. Um, any of those stuff like that. They'll have some around that size. I can't remember. Yeah. They definitely you, have a 10, definitely 20, but I'm pretty sure there's a mid sized one. Yeah. Um, it, or the uh, Daiwa dogfight. Yeah. Uh, well, what about the Saltiga? How do you not Saltiga, know that? Saltiga, sorry. Saltiga. The dogfight's mean, but. Yeah. So those would be my two picks. Fairly generic. Buy them off the <laughs> shelf. They're pretty dear, so I wouldn't say they're cheap. Twin power? You wouldn't go for a twin power? Those can't get them anymore, can you? Oh, they've got a new model out. If, if, if yeah. you could get a Twin Power or a Saragossa. Cool Saragossa is a sexy, but they're like um, middle of the range, eh? Yeah. But, but like mean. Yeah. Like if, if you were saying, hey, I, I want to spend some good money, but I don't want to buy, spend stupid money, like $1,300 for a Twin a twin Power or a Stella, yeah. what would you recommend? I'd be like, oh, no brainer. Go get a Saragossa. Yeah, I think you're right. So what, like, what, what would you have? I'd probably I'd like, is this a, how big are these kingies that we're going for? Oh, massive, massive, of course. I mean, we only target big kingies. Okay, I'll go for probably like a, a, a P4 or six. So something like a 300 gram jig rod with a Saragossa 10,000. If it's going to be like, you know, middle of the range. Yeah. And if, if we're going to go just stupid, I'd, I'd probably go for uh yeah, probably a dog fight or something. Yeah, oh, like a, a die with dog fight. That's the yeah, okay. yeah, cool. I, yeah, I, I think the beauty of a, blood rod. of a spin set, so I, I don't know about you, bro, I, I prefer a, an overhead jigging set, but the beauty of a spin set is that you can buy two rods um, and have yep. a, a jig and set. And that's what I've done. And a stick bait set, which is what you've done, and I'm very envious of you for doing that, and I think it's a really, really good way of saving money for, for targeting both sets. Um, yeah, surface and fishing it's fun to jig on. Oh, it's fun to fish. Fish. Like when, you, fun. when you're jigging with even with your top water set, um, it's a hoot. Like the, yeah. the fish that's 10 kilos feels like it's 30. And because it, you've got such a big lever. And it's such a visual way of, of fishing. I haven't done a lot of stick baiting, I must admit, but the times I've done it, I've always enjoyed it. Um, I think yeah. I think it's definitely times where it's on and it's and then there's other times where it's definitely off. Although that could be <laughs> yeah. for jigging and for stick baiting, but I love flicking things at channel markers oh. and those sorts of things it's it's good fun because you, you never know like, oh, what's coming to come up what's going yeah. to come up yeah and, and as we know kingies are notoriously um difficult when they're not interested you know snapper mm. snapper are more like dogs so if you put a bit of food in front of them they it's pretty unlucky that they're not going to eat it sure they have bite yeah. times and size but if you, you're there for long enough oh. you'll, you'll normally get something kingies are the opposite kingies are kingies are like a beautiful woman at a bar You've got to just have them in the right mood and make sure you've got all the right tackle, so to the speak. The drink's got to be theirs, right? The yeah. temperature's got to be right. Has yeah. she got her right shoes on? You don't even, yeah. you can't even control that. Yeah. Do I keep going? Did the taxi drop her off? Was her boss nice to her? That's right. Gosh, so you've, you, yeah. You've got all these going? things to, <laughs> <laughs> for the sake of our female audience, which I don't think we have a female audience. Oh, we're a massive up, amount, haven't we? Up, I apart from your mother. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <ouch. laughs> but uh but yeah we'll, we'll, we'll leave the, the sexism there but but i think you're right i think um yeah. I, I think those sets there are, are some cool recommendations for anyone wanting to get in to it the other thing i'd recommend um is knots 
Um, so something I've Learn been doing. Learn how to do an FG knot. And, and that's exactly what I've been doing this month. I All my jigging, I've never really, I've learned it, then I've forgotten it. What I've done is I've kept my tackle box in the lounge. Karina absolutely Oh, yeah, your it. missus would love that. Yeah, yeah she thinks yeah, it's a fantastic idea. Yeah, because your tackle idea. box smells like a, a night out in Hamilton. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it's shocking. <laughs> Um, it, it, it actually is disgusting, bro. You've got to, we've got to have an intervention. That thing is feral. It's again, like someone I, left a pilch it in there. Again, I don't look after my gear, so that's the problem. But I've been honestly, he gets to the end of the season and it's just like you open it up and it's just a rusty mess of and I've got plastic a bin it all. and rust. I've got to throw it all on the bin and buy new stuff for the next season. And you're, you're a poor teacher, man. You should look ah, after your gear better. I know, I know. But the point I was making is that what I've been doing is at night tying an FG knot, just one or two a night, and getting my skills up there to the point where I just cannot break it. Um, Jesus. There's, a, there's some cool cool videos on YouTube. There's some really average videos on YouTube too, I must admit, but there are some cool videos on YouTube to help you. Um, like, let's be honest, every time we went jigging, it'd be, Christian, can you, uh, is this lead long enough? Yeah. It's like, clearly not. Oh, can you? Uh, I'm going to have to retie. Uh, yeah, but but the, oh, I, I remember Nathan from Big Angry Fish having a conversation. I think you were there too at a boat show many years ago now about knots. You can spend. We've just talked about some sets, some jigging sets there that are well over a thousand dollars. Oh yeah, a thousand dollars. You could drive all the way to Mare Island, put the gas in. If you can't tie yep. a decent knot, you are absolutely wasting your time. Yep, hundred percent, man, hundred percent. Yep. So and even when you tie a good knot. There'll be other things that happen. So at least get the knots right, eh? Hey? Yeah, that's right. Because the last thing you want is you hook to bend open and you're not to break. Yeah. Because you look like an idiot in both scenarios. Now, I've never I'm heard a... of a rod really breaking on a kingy when you're actually fighting it. No, nah, let me see my dad and decides to point the rod up towards the sky. Yeah, that's but different. That was, that was user error. Um, another thing I just want to quickly pick up on, and, and, and again, it's something I've thought of doing and um, for listeners out there, because drinking's a bloody dare thing to get into. What do you think about buying bulk packs of jigs for, let's say, AliExpress or China and, 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 and using them? Now, I don't like doing that because I know, and I'm you're, not not supporting having, the local you're not supporting the local market, but shit, they're dare in New Zealand. You get like $30 to $50 each. Yeah. And sometimes it don't even come with a hook. Exactly. So, t- so I know you have done it. You, you well, actually, what happened was we, um, no, there was a guy that was must have done it. He must have done it. And there was 100 jigs for sale. And I think we got them for $400. So, and we just bought them all. And in all fairness, um, I've burnt through a lot of mine because I've given them away to mates that don't have jigs to get started. Yeah. Um, and you lose them on Barracuda and on the bottom and all that. Oh, do you what? Oh, and so I just, you know, and if I want a blue one and I haven't got a blue one, I just get my spray paint out and I have a blue one or I put my, I get the old um, stick on cellophane blue stuff and I have blue nice. if I want pink. I That's change whatever advice. colors yep. I've got. Yep. Keep it simple, man. And when the keys are on, they'll jump on it. Yeah. The, the other yeah. thing I would recommend too is, um, and I must give a bit of a plug to my old employer, Burns Co. They've got a product called Edge, Edge Fishing. I think it's there. And like. they do have some good, Good price. Stuff. They have some good price yeah. jigs. Yeah, I think I'm going to say about 20, yeah. 25 bucks a jig, which is, is pretty good for a complete Yeah, set. and sometimes they, they have like two for one. So you'll get like yeah. two for 30. So they come down yeah. to $15 each ish. Yeah. And it's that's mean. Yeah, so, man. So if, if it burns code.co.nz, I assume if, if you're listening, yeah, but I wanna... definitely reckon if you're going jigging, at least take three jigs. Oh it, my gosh. Well, just not for losing them, but also for colors. As we spoke wow. earlier, Kingy's a bloody. Can be, you know, okay. fussy, yeah, yeah, fussy yeah, buggers. yeah, yeah. So, um, and there has been times I've been jigging where I've had, I, I like a little bit of pink in my jigs, and I've had, I've I'm had a, and like, as you can tell, I'm a blue fan. Yep. And, and there's been times where, blues. where we've been fishing, and one person's been reaming it in, and another person yeah. barely touched the side. So, I, yeah. So there's there's definitely it, something to be said for that. Well, it's like fly fishing, eh, man? Well, we're not yeah. we're going to talk about fly fishing, but you've got to match the hatch, as they say. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It, yeah. You're like, what does that mean? Anyway, we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> roll over that one. Don't worry about that. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do a uh, freshwater episode one day if we want to lose our listener base. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. <laughs> if we want to lose our listener base, you want to have old men that smoke a pipe and yes, talk about the weather. 
Okay, bro. We better get into. We better start to wrap this up. We can't wrap up a podcast without doing uh, dog of the month. Now we we obviously skipped. Oh, you know last this is month. one of my this is my favorite thing. So now we skipped last month because we, we got out of time. Now my suggestion this month is mm-hmm. actually from a listener. So uh, Jordan, if you're listening, thanks, mate, for reaching out. Jordan's a friend do of ours. Have, do we have a listener? That We've got recommended... a listener who, who reached out and recommended a a, a a dog of the month. Now he's actually buying. Uh, well, last I spoke to him anyway, he was looking to buy a little boat. Just side note, before we get to dog of the month, you've just reminded me of something. He lives yep. down like a on a farm with an estuary out to uh, Peringaringa Harbour, I think it is, up north there. No way. Tell him and our other listeners as well, but tell him, talk to him specifically for a minute. Their little extreme side console boat you told me about just before we went on air. Oh, yeah, yeah man. So um, extreme in 2021 have just bought out a 430 outcast which is a side console rather than a center console so you sit to one side of the boat it reminds me of a fancy version of steve steve my old yellow trusty de havilland um it has a 25 <laughs> horsepower don't just steve i was, I was just about to say there is a, there is a picture of steve on our um at unable semen instagram page for those that may have missed it's not the there's not the table that's upside down <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, yeah, Steve's fantastic. This thing reminds me of Steve. It's got a 25 horsepower Mercom back four stroke. Bro, remember we used to go out all bloody weekend and use like 10, 15 litres of fuel and clock up like stupid distances, you know, yeah. 60Ks. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a beast, but it is, it's 4.3 metres long, 14 foot. It has a trailer, obviously, an outboard um side console it is twenty six thousand dollars yeah which is a lot of money that is a lot of money i suppose it is a new boat and that is a trailer and outboard and that is a package i don't think it includes electronics and everything but um, nah it doesn't include but, yeah, but I imagine, boat. yeah yeah would be epic in parang ranga harbour could you imagine yeah. that those beautiful clear waters bro perfect for what for what he wants so if Actually, you're listening who's the listener again what was his name jordan Jordan, man, he doesn't even need a boat. I hear the fishing off the shore is ever clear. Oh, no, he needs a boat, mate. He's already, I think he's already... He, oh, yeah, that's right. So, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're not going to go and saw it, but he, you know, throw the guy under the bus here. And, you know, he's already got Oh, the, no, because if his missus is listening, eh? Well, exactly. He's already got the tick. So I think... Well, okay, I think cool, should... cool. No, no, no. He okay, so, so, but anyway, coming back to it, he's recommended my dog of the week. Now, of course, okay. all of these are at our... Uh, our Instagram page at Unable Seaman. So please check this out. Okay. Yep. Um, I need to send. Have I not? Have I sent you the no, link? You haven't. Are you going to share screen with me, or how are you going to do this? No, I'm going to send you. Um, send you the link is what I'm going to do, and then I'm obviously going to post it onto our page. Now, Wait. oh wow, wow, wow! Forget Jordan, the don't, bit buy of you. don't buy this. Don't buy this. Luckily, this... Jordan is not going to buy this. It's four thousand. Oh, it's a oh, seventeen and a half foot, which is quite big for an absolute lemon. Looks like he's this guy's used some sort of downpipe, um, some sort of spouting, yeah, you know, spouting as the bow rail as his bow rail. Um, yep, the... it, it looks like it's on an old <laughs> like six by four trailer that he's just put some skids on. Yep. His um, jockey, his, his winch is a tie down to pull the boat up onto the trailer. Like a red tie down. So it's it's a, like a little hull, so it shouldn't be a hard top. This guy's put a hard top on top. Now, oh, wow. do you know what? The, like, I think the hard top is a my mind. I think he's been down the local lake in his little open cabin boat and it started to get rainy and he thought, shit, I know what I'll do. I'm going to pick this thing up and glue it by the looks because I can't see any bolts. Glue it to my very ugly alloy boat. It is just an know, absolute piece of work. Do you know what's happened here? I reckon it's actually a bus shelter that he's put on top. <laughs> it's a bus shelter. Yeah. No one's stopping for that, though. Then it gets even it gets even worse because I know you're going to try and defend this, but that Suzuki on the back, those old <laughs> one one four. Well, it's funny. It says 150 horse, but I think what he means is actually 115 horses. <laughs> yeah, 115 horses long, long ago. Yeah, it does. It does. You're right. It says 150 horse in the description in the pictures. 115, the lying bugger. Anyway, yeah. those those engines for listeners, those engines were nicknamed the Mentos because they absolutely corroded from the inside out. Yeah, now we get to shocking. the interior. This guy's used a whole lot of like sign boards. boards, like yeah, real estate signs or um, <laughs> as the floorboards, something, something qu- quality lubricants as the floorboards. <laughs> it runs on a tote tank. That tote tank would last two minutes with that yeah. outboard. Yeah. 
So that's and, Jordan's. Uh, and then it looks like there's some sort of like black box in the side. I don't know, like a a, a toolbox yeah. from the back of a ute. Uh, it does look a bit like that. I don't know. And he's extended the height of the uh, the gunnels too. He has extended. I mean, yeah, you know, when you're winching big kingies, I'm sure this boat's got um got you know game fish potential. Uh, uh, can you imagine looking through that windscreen? Like that is ridiculous. It's like I it's like it's be, a, a. I wouldn't want a, to look through the windscreen because I would be fearful that someone would be looking back and see me on what is one of the ugliest pieces of shit ever to feature on this podcast could could we could we i would buy that just to see what it was like four grand that that's a lot of money for that's that. a lot of money okay i wouldn't pay but, four grand i probably wouldn't even pay a thousand bucks for it so that's so that's my dog of the month on behalf of uh, of jordan um, so thanks, mate, for sending that in. Again, any other listeners? He wins, mate. This hey, is I, I can't beat this. I'm going to show you mine anyway. But um, this is Jordan, a piece of just while you're listening to, mate, send me your address, and I'll flick you. Uh, I'll flick you a little something from us to say thank you for listening, and uh, and thank you for what do we even this. have? To oh, give? Mate, I've got some. I've got some jigs. <laughs> I promise they're not out of my rusty toolbar. <laughs> those are jigs that they're I gave brand, you. <laughs> they're brand new jigs. That trust me, they're not ones you've given me. They're legit. <laughs> Um, did you go and buy these things. are we like sponsor, sponsored now or something no we're not sponsored i'm dipping into my okay. hey jordan you, this is this is pretty good because he's a tight ass he doesn't <laughs> even give me fucking yeah. this is amazing so i'm gonna get my mum to call him so um so and, and any other listeners if you ever have a, a dog of the month please submit it and i will pick and if, if it features in the podcast i will is it my you. turn to shout next week it is definitely, yeah, it's your turn it's christian's turn to shout next week so don't expect much Okay, anyway, Christian, submit okay, okay, your... Okay, can I have... Okay, I'll, I'll just do... I'll submit one, but I, I want to know. Do you want a launch or do you want a powerboat? Ooh, I tell you what. Like a, like a sport boat. A sport boat or a launch? We've already had a powerboat in terms of a trailer boat. So let's go launch. Let's go something... Oh, okay. I'm listeners. actually surprised. Let's okay, go something okay, like... Okay, so, so the one I've shared with you, is it the yellow? Is it in your, it says X yeah. Air Force boat. X Check Air Force this. boat. Okay, there is. Um, this is what our Air Force used to have. I think maybe he means Navy. I don't know if the, I don't know if the Air Force really specialises. It does say yeah, it says Air Force. Though, like crazy. Yeah, I, hey, oh. Air Force. Oh my God! Look at that stained glass window. <laughs> yep. And do you oh. like the tarp on the top? There's a tarpaulin instead of a hard top. Uh, geez, that 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 bow fair lead, whatever it's called at the front, I would I wouldn't lean on it, let alone tie it off somewhere. In fact, you'd hope it would pull out because then it would drift away and you wouldn't have to look at it. It's what a boat. Eh? Have you seen there's a photo here and you want to see the plywood repair to the front? <laughs> oh, look at this thing, it's idiot. Oh, <laughs> The thing is, do you know what it looks like? It looks like the sort of thing a father makes, a stepfather who doesn't really like his kids. He's made these kids a hut in the bush. This is what this looks like. <laughs> he doesn't really like his kids. Hey, oh. in all fairness, it's 40 foot long. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big boat. There's one feature of it. <laughs> it's ex-Air Force boat. What needs does that work, mean? Needs woodwork repairs and alterations... Woodwork repair on the outside. It needs a match. Yeah. Inside is good. Inside Se is good. Inside is good. Selling as is. I would not expect Steering is good. Warranty. Ford motor runs good. Steering is good. Would need two heavy duty batteries. There is no anchor. Would the heavy but duty I, have... I wouldn't be heavy too heavy duty. They'll go through the bottom of the hull. I'll tell you what's really concerning here is someone's asked a question on it. Hi, any yeah, more no. photos? Mustard face, it's your trade me username. Whoever you are, for God's sake, Stop. don't buy no, that. Don't, 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 don't yeah. 20 uh, I, Hang on, <clears> ask your <throat> price $20. What is or was the boat's name? Well, this is a good name, W44. So the boat's name is W44. W44. Um, now a lot of people are asking about the price. There's some genuine interest in this thing. Yeah, no, man. I, I is... am excited. Well, I hope none of those people listening are at Unable Seaman Podcast. This listeners. guy offered him, make me an offer, $2,000. Reply, no. So this guy wants more than $2,000 for this. Not oh, even wow. worth it. Owner needs to sort his shit out, dot, dot, dot. I'll, I'll give you the $20 as stated in the asking price. <laughs> tow it away within a week. 
<laughs> Guys, no. That, that, whoever that person is, I want to know. I'm going to send them some fishing lures too because that is the best comment. Um, so as <laughs> that, um, that boat will also feature on uh, our at Unable Seaman um, Instagram channel. So if you want to have a bit of a look there and see what we're talking about, um, yeah, it's called Air Force Boat. If you want to search it on Trade Me, I don't know the relevance of that. Um, it's certainly, if that's our Air Force, we're in deep, deep, deep trouble. What should I offer him? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offer him something. You're going to offer him something? Okay. But we, four, we don't have... four grand, four grand like your one and see who wins. <laughs> four grand. Yeah, we'll see if you get it for four grand and then, and then the show budget. And then back, it, back, which... it, back out of it quickly. <laughs> So we'll keep you updated on that with our next podcast. I'll make a little note here to see if you, uh, if your offer was accepted. I hope it's not. <laughs> um, if we have, then that is our that is our official at unable seaman boat. And, um, Wouldn't it be gutting? Maybe that way we could take listeners out and we could do podcasts from it. Oh God, I'm, <laughs> uh, no. I'm sure it's so, not up okay. to. Um, to Ministry of Transport standards, or whatever you need to get to, to have people on board. 4K. Yeah. I'll go 4K dot dot dot. 4K dot dot dot. Anyway, if, if the fact that we are making offers on absolute lemons must mean that, um, that clearly things that have gotten, got out of hand here. So I think it's time to wrap it up before Christian accidentally buys more junk off the internet that no, don't uh, we don't have money to pay Chelsea. for. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I don't have the money. <laughs> um, I just want to yeah. say, Thank you to all our listeners. It was really nice to hear from some of you for our last podcast. We um, we do put a lot of work into this and we, we try our best. So it's always nice to know that uh, that people are listening. So please, again, I keep saying it every every episode, uh, reach out, give us a message on, on Instagram. Um, you mm -hmm. can email us at Unable Seaman uh, or, or just make any sort of way of contacting us. Let us know you're listening. Um, tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. Submit your dog of the month. And, uh, yep. and keep keep listening. As mentioned, we are trying to get um, Mig from Fishing and Adventure on the podcast. It sounds like he's keen. It's just a case of us all getting in the same place at the same time. That's pretty much a day, yeah. So stay tuned for that. Might be next episode, maybe. We'll see. Never know. Never, Never know. know. So, so stay tuned for that. Um, as always, bro, always a pleasure to talk to you. And um, Never chore. Uh, yeah, look, I've disagreed with about 98% of what you said in this episode, but hey, never mind. Um, <laughs> at least the listeners have something to, to learn not how to do it. <laughs> Ouch. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But, oh, well. uh, but anyway, we'll see you next month on uh, At Unable Seaman podcast. Thanks again for listening. Adios. See you.